Good evening. Before we start the regular city council meeting for May 1st, 2017, we'd open with the first 15 minutes for open mic. This is the time that if you have something you'd like to talk to council about, feel free to come to the microphone. We'd like to have your name. If you don't have one, we'll assign one to you. Joke. That was clever, wasn't it? Thank you. Um, if not, then we'll move on into our regular city council meeting. So if anyone would like to address city council at this time, please come on up to the mic. Well, that's been popular. So I'd like to then call the regular city council meeting for Jul May 1st, 2017. I'd like to hereby call to order. And uh, we'll start with the invocation from Alicia. Would you come to the microphone from the Vineyard Fellowship? You please rise. Well, Lord, I'm just so thankful for this city, uh, for the founding fathers of our city and everyone who's committed and given so much of their time and effort, Lord, to make this city what it is. Lord, thank you for this city. Thank you for each one here that contributes and uh, works so hard to make this city a great place to live. And Lord, we invite you right now just to come and bring unity. Lord, it's you who watches over a city. And so we ask in the name of Jesus that you would watch over this city, that you would protect, it, uh, uh, protect us, that you would keep our people safe, that you would bless the land and give us favor. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you. Just wait a minute. Okay, would you call a roll, please? Mayor Troutman. Here. Council members Smith. Here. Ekstrom. Here. Schumacher. Here. Gill. Here. Weed. Here. Hawkes. Here. And Meisner. Here. We have a quorum. Right, thank you. So do we have any citizens written requests to talk to council? We have received none. We have received none? Then we move on to number three, which is approval of the minutes for the April 17th regular city council meeting and April 19th vision committee meeting. Are there any corrections at this time? Mr. Meisner. I'll let Kathy take over. Yes, uh, council member Meisner has asked that uh, so he would like to have part of item number eight where he clarified his position on the art public art committee. So uh, in that, sentence would be replaced with Councilmember Meisner commented that he resigned from the Public Art Committee because of his failure to communicate as a council member of that group. He further clar clarified that some of the things that the Fremont Center for the Arts would publicly now do for the city in terms of the display of arts has nothing to do with the discussions or issues that happened with the Arts Committee. He added that he was not involved with any of the process in terms of working out FCA doing more public displays of art. Uh, with that, uh, I would ask that you uh, approve the minutes with those suggested changes. One more. On the same paragraph, <clears throat> you have Ann Sullivan and it's Nan. Oh, it probably <laughs> changed it. I bet the computer <laughs> changed it. Just a typo. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> Are there any other corrections? We'll change her name to Nan. <laughs> Okay. Do I have a motion to uh, approve and a second as amended the minutes for those two meetings I mentioned? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mocker. <clears throat> I make a motion that we approve the minutes from the 4-17-2017 regular council meeting with the corrections as stated and the 4-19-2017 vision committee meeting. Second. Second. Mr. Arquez, did you? Second, uh, motion to remain second. Would you call the roll, please? Council Member Schumacher? Aye. Member Hawkes? Aye. Council Member Smith? Aye. Council Member Meisner? Aye. Council Member Weed? Aye. Council Member Ekstrom? Aye. Council Member Gill? Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Are there any Council Member announcements at this time? 
Mr. Weed. Yes, uh, we will be having a general government committee meeting Wednesday at four o'clock in this room. Okay. Any other announcements? Mr. Meisner? Uh, we have a parks meeting, our final parks meeting uh, on the design of Centennial Park. <laughs> And then that design will be forwarded to council as I'm understanding it. That is tomorrow at three o'clock. That's here? In yes. This building. It's in this building. Okay. Mr. Ekstrom, are you? Yeah, I actually received an email that we have a the first river corridor meeting on Thursday at four? Three. At three. Thursday at three. Yep, Thursday at three. Okay. Ms. Smith? Uh, Mr. Mayor, we also have the city has the radio talk show tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. at Carolyn. I'd invite any council member to join us if they'd like. I'd also like to request that we put on the calendars a public meeting on Friday, May 19th at 8.30 a.m. That's our scheduled stormwater meeting. Um, it's going to be a meeting where all of the county commissioners are coming to. It's going to be a public meeting for them. Uh, I think this is... I know perhaps historic or first time that all of the commissioners are coming to meet and willing to talk about potential projects for 2018 and the mutual funding of those projects. I think it'll be important that we have Canyon City Council representation at that meeting. I'd like it to be more than just myself and or Jim Meisner there and hope that you can put that on your calendar and be there if you can. Here at City Hall. What time? May 19th at 8.30 a.m. It's a Friday morning. I, I have that. I intend to be there. Okay. Yeah, it's usually in A110. We may have to move that downstairs if it's going to be a larger meeting. It's just a couple extra people. There's plenty of room. Yeah. Okay. So is that, our, that stands for our public announcement because there will be more than two council people there. You get it on the calendar. Okay. Any other announcements from the council? Hearing none, I'd like to recognize Mr. Bob Hartsman. Would you come up to the microphone, Bob? Thank you, Mayor. Yep. Good evening, council members, city staff. Um, I'll try to do this well, so it doesn't look like I'm just reading from this, but I will be. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, thank you for the time to come before you here. Uh, this year marks the 43rd anniversary of the Safe Drinking Water Act that forms the core of our national efforts to provide quality drinking water and protect the health of our citizens. Next week, beginning May 7th through the 13th, uh, we will celebrate National Drinking Water Week, a national observance that highlights the value of water to each of us in our everyday lives. In Colorado, approximately 5 million people are served daily by more than 2,400 public drinking water systems, ranging in size from a drinking fountain at a roadside rest area to a large metropolitan drinking water system. Each Coloradoan relies on their water system, whether large or small, <coughs> to provide a safe and dependable supply of water both now and into the future. National Drinking Water Week recognizes the importance of water source protection and conservation, as well as the value, importance, and fragility of our state's water resources. The Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment works with drinking water utilities to make sure that the water <coughs> delivered to <coughs> consumers meets all drinking of federal and state standards and is clean and abundant. These efforts are vital to Colorado's economy and to the public health of our citizens. The task facing state drinking water programs and public water systems continue to be extremely challenging, especially in an era of source scarce resources. The drinking water infrastructure in many cities is aging and presents daunting resource demands. As a nation, we continue to be challenged by new and emerging drinking water contaminants associated 
with our industrial society. Today, the City of Canyon City renews its commitment to build on the successes of the past 42 years and to con continue to work with all of our partners in the water community to fully realize the public health goals of the Safe Drinking Water Act through celebrating National Drinking Water Week. Thank you, Bob. I also have a proclamation, and I will read this, so <laughs> I didn't memorize it. The proclamation from the mayor's office, whereas the health, safety, and well-being of all Coloradans are utmost importance to the prosperity and livelihood of our state's families and communities, and whereas Colorado streams, lakes, rivers, watersheds, and other clean water sources must be protected to maintain the good health of our citizens, wildlife, and fisheries, and whereas protecting Colorado's natural water supply and other natural resources is critical to the preservation of our <coughs> environment for future generations of Coloradans, and whereas elected officials at each level of government, as well as businesses and citizens throughout our state, are responsible for ensuring that all Coloradans have access to clean water, and whereas it is the duty of all Coloradans to preserve our supply of clean drinking water for future generations, and obey laws which protect Colorado's water supply for our use and for Colorado's diverse ecosystem. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Preston Troutman, do hereby proclaim May 7th through the 13th, 2017, as Colorado, a City of Canyon City Drinking Water Week in the City of Canyon City, Colorado, and I call this observance to the attention of all our <coughs> citizens. And thank you. Thank you for running our water plant so well. I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Mayor. Thank well, you, I think Mayor. what I'd like to do is have you come up front with the council. We'll take a picture, and uh, we'll do it right in front here. And I'll present this. <laughs> You're so tall, too. And your place today. Oh, did you? <laughs> Excuse me, Mayor. Uh, just one other thing. Uh, yes. I'd like to take this opportunity just to personally invite each and every one of you council members, city staff, the press, all of our citizens uh, up to the water treatment plant on Friday, May 12th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we're hosting an open house and we'll be conducting tours of the facility on the top of the hour at the top of each hour. So uh, if you could right. make it, that'd be great, as well as all of our citizens. Thank you. And Bob, that, that's really great. My, uh, I've been through that, and yep. it is, I can't imagine how complicated <coughs> it is to make good water for a town. And my 12-year-old has been through your plant. He was also impressed, and I asked him if he'd been there, and he goes, oh, yes, many times. Then he continued to tell me for about 20 minutes how hard it was to make good water for our town. And I, I'm, I'm impressed. So you need to get up there. It is very interesting. I appreciated it last year. So I think everybody yep. needs to go up there. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you again. Uh -huh. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Whereas the, no, I'm sorry. Uh, number five is the adoption of the agenda and the consent agenda. Tony, would you review the consent agenda items, please? Sure. 5A would authorize the city administrator to amend the current lease with American Tower for six additional five-year terms commencing August 1st, 2022. In consideration, American Tower will make a one-time $50,000 payment 
to the city and agreed to 3% annual <coughs> increases during the terms of these extensions. Uh, for, in 2017, the city will generate about $17,800 for lease payments from the American Towers who have towers on Fremont Peak. Uh, 5B would authorize the city administrator to execute an agreement to retain Terry Burnett as an independent contractor for planning services until the end of December 2017 to provide a smooth transition between her and our new director and the workload that uh, is, is uh, having to be addressed. 5C would authorize temporary street closure on the 1200 block of College Ave and 12th Street from 4th to College on June 3rd from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. for the Safety Jam event. 5D would authorize temporary street closure on the 600 to 700 <coughs> blocks of Main Street on May 20th from 10 a.m. to midnight for the after flashback event. Uh, bids to be an award on the Leisha GS GPS rover and data collection system. This is survey equipment for both engineering and war departments to Hexon Manufacturing. This is a sole source because of pre-existing equipment for conformity reasons for $36,474.29. Bid 4117 would be for tree pruning for the Parks Department and that would be an award to Front Range Arborist not to exceed $60,000. We did get two bidders. Um, unfortunately, the local bidder was much higher. So hopefully in the future there'll be more competition. Bid 4217 is for the Summer Road Crack and Chip Seal Pavement Management Program. Well, we hope to do at least five center lane miles of road. So in conjunction between this m m pavement management program and 2A, this community is going to see a lot of road work this summer. Uh, so bear with us, but the results will be beneficial. Uh, there were eight contractors that were notified, two bidders, and uh, we're recommending the award be to A1 Chip and Seal from Denver in the amount of $336,779.16 with a 10% contingency for grand total of uh, $70,457.08. Uh, the budget for this endeavor is $400,000. So this is under budget even with the contingency so we're very, very pleased with the bid good thank you tony are there any uh, additions or corrections you're going to have a motion a second to accept the consent agenda mr mayor mr marker i make a motion that we accept the adoption of the agenda and the consent agenda as presented today. Thank you, Mr. Weed. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Meisner? I want to again express my frustration with um, the city's ongoing concept of uh, sole, source bids. sole source bids because of pre existing purchases, and I understand that concept. But what bothers me in particular with this particular one is the closing statement on the letter from the vendor. It says, going with someone other than Lucia, is that how you pronounce that? And Hickson Manufacturing Supply will be costly to your budget. I find that a rather interesting statement from a sole source award. We would agree it's probably not an appropriate statement, but as you had recognized for sake of uniformity in equipment, uh, unfortunately, we have to sole source this. As you well know, most of our bids are competitive, uh, but I understand your concern about sole source. We try to minimize that. And then my second question, I think, is just a, a I'm going to call it a copy error, but on the, on the tree contract, on the back of the tree contract appears to be the bid information for the chip and seal. It doesn't appear to be a recap for the tree bids, or at least on my copy. I would have liked to have seen some more details about the tree bids. I have some questions about it. Sure, oh, ma'am, we, we, I can provide you some information. In, as they indicate, we got two bidders. The local bidder was twice uh, the cost of the recommended bidder. This project, uh, I would... If I want to understand, Rex, I just had heard some things at City Hall that last year it was bid per hour. This year it was bid out 
per tree. Is that is this the right contract for that? Yeah, we bid it out this time based upon the diameter of trees, so three different classifications, and we, we found that uh, we got a better bid for that. And the the recommended bidder has done an outstanding job, so we believe we're going to get excellent service. But we would like to see more local bidders now. Tr tree pruning does require specialized equipment, and that may prevent more local landscape companies from bidding because they don't have the specialized equipment. Like a saw? Didn't a local, Ladder tr didn't you a know, local company have the, the contract last year? <clears throat> Excuse me? Didn't a local company have the contract yes. last yes. year? Yes. And aren't, was there a problem with the local company last year? Isn't often no, I think just from Rex's perspective, they've tried different formulas that he believes this is the optimal formula for tree trimming, in, in his opinion, as far as cost. And so that's the way he had it bid out. And Wasn't last year's concept that that concept for last year was the optimal concept that would save us the most amount of dollars? Well, he had, he had tried it. He's tried different concepts, and you know he truly believes this is the best approach and method for tree pruning. <coughs> I, I get a little nervous because I've heard comments also made, well, I can write the bid according to how, who I want to win the bid. Is this an example of where the bid was changed or skewed for no, or against No, absolutely not. No. I called two yeah. local mm -hmm. tree mm -hmm. services and asked them if they were made aware and why they didn't bid. And I was told by both of these who were not either that they were aware of the bid, and one of them told me that he had more business than he could handle this year, and the other one said that he had been branching out into other services and he just didn't have the time as he's setting up another side business. So, because I was concerned too, yep. but they weren't interested in it, so. Thank you for making those phone calls. <laughs> I, I realize these are all competitive bids according to our competitive bid process, but it just as disheartening to award the amount of dollars that we're awarding over the last couple of months to non-local, at least city and county vendors. Yeah. And I realize yeah. we've got limitations there, but I also have to question if there's something not skewing in our system. Well, we can give you an example. Of we've, we've talked to you about the 4th Street Viaduct. Uh, that's a $1 million project. We got zero bids. Zero. How do you explain that? I don't have one. Neither do we. Oh, and I, well, I have uh, another question with our local <laughs> vendors. Sometimes mm -hmm. we say if they're doing a good job, we offer them a, an extension on their contract. Would that could it have been an option for our local? Possibly, uh, yeah. Yeah. Again, he was trying a different <clears throat> process this year, so that's it, why. And I, was I believe <clears throat> that they were operating on an extension of the contract already. Yes. No. We do have that available. No, he was he was changing the methodology, so we had to open up the the competition. But yeah, uh, we would like to see more local bidders across the board, not just with bids. We have the same problem with employment. We have a hard time recruiting people to even apply for jobs in an environment where our survey tells us that people are in dire need of good paying jobs, well, they're available. We're just not getting much in the way of application. That may be a key when you say good paying. Well, relative to, you know, the marketplace, I think they are good paying. And we certainly have outstanding benefits. I mean, the uh, city has excellent health benefits compared to the private sector. So we'll keep trying. You know, we, we reach out to people. Uh, we communicate. Uh, it's all we can really do to get people to step up and apply, whether it's a job or for a bid. We, we can't do much more than that. Um, can I ask a question about the um, chip and seal bid? And Adam, this might be for you. Is the list in our packet of streets, are all the streets that will receive chip and seal? Or it would be the map. Do you see a map? They're highlighted. I have a map yeah. and a lengthy list. That's the preliminary list until the contractor's on board, so it may be changed slightly, but that's the plan. So I have a, just a small question. I don't know about all of the streets, but on Orchard it says that it'll be done from Pear to Central Street. And I noticed that um, north of Central Street on Orchard, that the road is quite bad. And I was wondering why that wasn't included or if there's other plans for that section of road. It's gotten pretty bad this last winter. This is, this is a cracked chip seal job, so this is sealing good roads, not repairing bad roads. That's the 2A project. 
Um, can we just put that north um, on Orchard, north of Central, that maybe some pot filling or something needs to be done there? Sure, I'll pass that on to streets. Yep. I appreciate you listening to my concerns. Always. <laughs> we were going to recommend you reach out to, to Councilmember Mark, if Gil, if you have issues with potholes in your streets, because we found that he's done an outstanding job on his own street with his own materials and workforce. So we're recommending him to anyone. <laughs> we're not going to go there tonight. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's in the motion yeah, that we have up before us. But uh, two hundred dollars at Home Depot. Me and my boy filled our potholes. Did you? Yes. Oh, good. Good. That was a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go for the uh, roll call. <laughs> Councilmember Schumacher. Aye. Councilmember Weed. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Councilmember Gill. Aye. Councilmember Hawkes. Aye. Councilmember Meisner. Nay. Approved by majority vote. Okay, administrator's report, did we do that yet? Yeah, I just want to highlight two things. Uh, Terry's respla replacement is Dina Swetlick, and she started today, and we'll reintroduce her to the council on Wednesday when you're going to be talking about exactions and playing related matters, so she's excited about that, and she'll be coming up to speak quickly. She'll also facilitate the Arkansas River Corridor Committee, so we're very excited about Dina. And then uh, Ryan... <coughs> Stevens will start as our new economic development downtown director on June the 1st. So we've got two really outstanding people coming on board. So we're excited. I have a question, Tony. When, when Terry leaves at the end of the year for yeah. the day-to-day -day planning and code enforcement and such, at what point will we start looking for her replacement in that category? Well, as I mentioned in the memo to you, we're going to recommend that as part of the 2018 budget. So you'll hopefully support that this summer. And based upon that support, we'll start recruiting in the early fall because both Terry and uh, Dina should be part of that. One knows the job. The other one's going to be their future boss. So it would be a team effort to find someone because it would be a very critical position. Is that it, Tony? Thank you. All right, then we're going to open up number seven, which is ordinance number 10, a series 2017. This is a second reading. It's an ordinance imposing distance requirements between medical marijuana facilities and public parks. Public parks. Could you read my title, please? for ordinance number 10 series of 2017 and ordinance amending certain sections of chapter 5.56.080 of the Canyon City Municipal Code to impose distance requirements between medical marijuana facilities and public parks. Could I have a motion and a second? Ms. Smith? Mayor, I move that we adopt ordinance 10 series of 2017 upon the second reading. Second. Second, Mr. Weed. Any discussion on the motion? <coughs> Hearing and seeing none, could I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Smith. Aye. Councilmember Weed. Aye. Councilmember Meisner. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Councilmember uh, Schumacher. Aye. Councilmember Hawkes. Aye. Councilmember Gill. Aye. Approved by unanimous <coughs> vote. Okay, is this where I have to leave again? I have to leave again. Okay. We are going to turn this over to Mayor Pro Tem because my company has an interest in this. I will not go far. Careful or I'll adjourn. All right, moving on to item number eight is ordinance number 11, series of 2017. Kathy, would you read by title? This is a bill for ordinance number 11, series of 2017, an ordinance amending Title 17 of the Canyon City Municipal Code to add a permitted use type 2 training facility in the C General Commercial Zones District. Uh, could I get a motion from someone on council? Mr. Hawkes. Uh, Mayor Portem, I make a motion that we approve. On second reading, an ordinance adding a permitted use type two training facilities, also known as an educational drop-in <coughs> center in the C commercial zone district. Second? Second. Kathy. Okay. Any further discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Councilmember Hawkes? Aye. Councilmember Schumacher? Aye. Councilmember Gill? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom? Aye. Councilmember Smith? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Weed. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. 
keep the ball rolling. <laughs> okay, moving on to item number nine. Come on. <laughs> That's, I'm just going to get started here. Uh, public hearing application for a special event liquor permit. Um, uh, I'm going to open the public hearing and ask for a report from the city clerk. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and Mr. Mayor. Coming back, Count members of council, this is Rob Brown and Lisa Himes, who is representing the Create Your Community, who has applied to this council for a special event liquor permit for May 27th <coughs> and 28th at the Holy Cross Abbey for the annual Balloon Festival. Notice of this public hearing was given by posting the location near the area. This event will be limited to the Abbey Events Complex and will be limited exclusively to that campus this year. There will be a number of vendors, including those serving food and live music. Uh, the libation station will be separated from the general event by fencing. This is, is the organization's second event. It's actually our fourth. Second time we've asked for a liquor Second license. liquor licensing event. Let me clarify that. No. Uh, that includes alcohol sales. While their volunteers have not attended any liquor training, they will utilize the Kansas City Chamber of Commerce to assist with the sale and service of alcohol beverages. All individuals will be checked at the entrances and individuals age 21 and up will receive a wristband and those only with wristbands will be served alcohol. Volunteers from the organization and Chamber of Commerce will provide security and enforcement assistance around the perimeter and patrolling the event. Uh, an on-site Inspection of the premises will be conducted the first day of the event, and once all requirements have been, of the inspection have been fulfilled, the permit will be issued that day on the spot. Upon reviewing the application, it has been de determined that the appropriate fees have been submitted. The diagram meets the filing requirements. The applicant has pre obtained permission to use the premises, and the corporation is good standing with the Secretary of State. And I need a glass of water. Thank you. With that, I'd open it up to any questions you have of the applicant. Any questions of the applicant? Mr. Guess? Are you familiar with the Colorado Liquor Code? Yes. Is there a copy of the Liquor Code on file with your organization? Yes. How many volunteers do you plan on having for this event and how will they be trained on the Liquor Code and Liquor Laws? We're going to use the uh, Canyon City Chamber of Commerce as our uh, institution that's going to take care of that for us and they're going to have how many Are we volunteers? We have approximately uh, 24 volunteers, of which there'll probably be fewer because they'll be doing multiple shifts, but we have 24 openings for people to volunteer for various shifts. All of them have been trained in the liquor code. Uh, if we do have an individual that won't, uh, they will be accompanied by someone who has had training. Are you fully aware that you that you and you're responsible for compliance with the Colorado Liquor Code and that any violations of this code may be held against you and your organization as well as future licensing. Yes. How many balloons this year? We're going to have 18 balloons, uh, including uh, three that are hand painted, which are the only three in this part of the world. So it's going to be a very special event this year. Good. Hopefully the weather cooperates. Yes, uh, and with the incredible uh, pull uh, that this council has with the big guy upstairs, I'm expecting uh, that we'll have great weather. Not us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, we're devolving here. Oh, how about any, any other questions from council? Before we get too windy? Any uh, comments from the audience? <laughs> Hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Could I have a motion and a second? There goes. Mayor and Council, I, I'm going to approve an application for a special event liquor permit for Create Your Community Incorporated May 27th and 28th Holy Cross Abbey Balloon Festival. Second. Thank you, Mr. Weed. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing and seeing no one, you call the roll, please. Councilmember Hawkes? Aye. Councilmember Weed? Aye. Councilmember Meisner? Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom? Aye. Councilmember Smith? Aye. Councilmember Gill? Aye. Councilmember Schumacher? Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Thank you. Mm. Thank sure. you very Successful much. event. Thank I know you. it will be. Good luck. Good luck. And thank you. We love the Balloon Festival. Yes, we do. <laughs> I just want to make one small comment because I had someone at the chamber that called me about things going on at the Balloon Festival this year. And I mentioned something about our music. And they said, we didn't realize you had music at the Balloon Festival. 
So I just want to make sure that the public knows that we have a great band lineup going on for the Balloon Festival. There will be music both days. So besides great balloons and great food and great vendors, we're going to have great music. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Number 10, I'll be opening a public hearing for the application of a special event liquor permit for Fremont Community Foundation May the 20th on the 600 and 700 block of Main Street. The public hearing is hereby open. Could we have a report from the city clerk, please? Members of council, this is Dan <laughs> <laughs> representing the Fremont Community Foundation who has applied to this council for a special event liquor permit for May 20th in the 600 and 700 blocks of Main Street for their ninth annual flashback event. Notice of this public hearing was given by posting the location near the site, more specifically 602 Main Street. Uh, the event will be from noon to midnight. This year's event will be similar to the ones conducted in the past. There will be food and other vendors in a street dance along with the other events that they have scheduled. Individuals 21 and up will receive uh, an identifiable wristband so they indicate legal drinking age. Many volunteers from this organization have attended training in the past and will provide security and enforcement assistance around the perimeter as well with patrolling the overall event. An on-site inspection of the premises will be conducted on the day of the event and once all requirements of the inspection has been fulfilled, the permit would be issued. Upon review of the application, the appropriate fee has been submitted, the diagram reads the requirements, the applicant has obtained a temporary street closure that you just approved uh, under the consent agenda, and the corporation is in good standing with the Secretary of State. So with that, I'd open it up to any questions any council members may have of the applicants. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. You too, Dan. Yeah. The guy behind yeah. the poster. Are you John familiar with the Colorado Liquor Code? <laughs> yes. Is there a copy of the Liquor Code on file with your organization? Yes. Uh, how many volunteers do you plan on having for this event? Uh, involved in the beer pouring, there will be about 15 volunteers. How will they be trained on the liquor code and liquor laws? Most of them have been trained through the city, and there are actual board members, and then one of our board members owns a liquor establishment, and she's well trained, and she oversees the, uh, all of our bars. Are you fully aware that you are responsible for compliance with the Colorado Liquor Code and that any violations of this code may be held against you and or your organization as well as future licensing? Yes. <laughs> Just check it with John. Make sure he said he was aware of it, so we're good. All right. came to the training the other day. Uh, yes, he did. John was at training. Uh, let us know some more about what's going on, if you'd like. Go ahead. Within five oh, minutes. Oh, sure, drop the ball Look, on me. Has, now. I've been sitting up here like this. You know? <clears throat> Come on, Ben. So this is our after flashback. Um, another street dance. We moved it down a block. It's in the six and 700 block this year uh, to accommodate some of the merchants, and it's a little better location for us. The stage will be set up in the intersection of the 600 block and face east. Um, we have contracted with a 1970s rock legend in Pure Prairie League. If you do some of the history and some of us that lived through that, remember them as a top 40 band for most of the 70s. So we're very excited about them. Tommy and the Cruisers will come up uh, at 5 o'clock and start the show off. And then Pure Prairie League will take the stage about 7.30. So we will have adult beverages as well as food vendors and other events, uh, things going on for the kids. It's a family-friendly event. It uh, is a main goal uh, of ours to bring people downtown Canyon City, see what a beautiful street we have, what a beautiful main street we have, um, and raise a little money. John, did you say, tell me that location of the stage again? It's going to be at this, the intersection of the 600 block of Main. It'll be set in. It won't right. be at, okay. in the intersection. Yeah, well, I have it 600. I thought you said yeah. 7. Yeah. Okay. Any comments from the audience? <laughs> I, I remember can, them happening, but I just don't know what happened. I think there was an anonymous comment from the audience about remembering the 70s. So I don't know who that, I don't know who that individual was. was Pure Prairie League. Vince Gill started with Pure Prairie League. If you guys want to look him up, the song Amy right. that we probably all know, that's their most famous tune. So it'll be fun. They're I'm not familiar Vince with gonna that be there? song. How does it go? I don't know. Oh, no, Mark. Please. We're, Dan, no, how wait, does that go? No, wait. This is getting out of hand here. That's a factoid. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm totally lost. Okay. We've done the comments from the audience. So I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing and seek a motion and a second. Mr. Meisner. 
Mr. Mayor, Council, I move that we approve the application for a special event liquor permit for Fremont County Community Foundation at, on May 20th on the 6 and 700 blocks of Main Street. Second. Second, Mr. Schumacher. Any discussion on that motion and second? Hearing none, and uh, would you call a roll, please? Councilmember Meisner. Aye. Councilmember Schumacher. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Aye. Councilmember Haquez. Aye. Councilmember Smith. Aye. Councilmember Gill. Aye. Councilmember Weed. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Well, thank you all. Good luck, Dan. Thanks again, guys. It'll We're adjourned.